I've just dropped the light out that I was talking about earlier on. Um, and now you can see what I'm getting at. There's a good two inches of... Oh, actually I, was gonna, I thought that actually went all the way through, but clearly it doesn't. It's actually loose. There's a good two inches of some insulation there. How much is there is now a lot less than I thought, because that's just loose. I was actually thinking that was one solid piece going all the way along the van, but clearly there's not much up there. Directly above that, there's a gap of about three inches, and you can see it's soaking wet. There's condensation all over the place up there. And that's what was dripping down onto the foil back of this. If it is a foil back, it might not even be a foil back. And flowing down, you can actually see uh, where the water's been running on the light. And that's just one example. I expect the entire van's like that all the way through. Um, if they'd put this piece of insulation, if they'd filled in up there as well, it would be much better. But there's a nice void like this. Obviously an access channel, you can run cables, you can add things to it. It's ideal for what they've built it for. But as um, a vehicle conversion, some people live with it. A lot of people convert them as is and just put up with it probably aren't even aware there's a problem. Um, if it's just cold and damp and they don't know why. But that's a good indication of what you don't want to be ha have happening. Um, now on the side here, there's another hole. Oops, excuse me. And again, if you look in there you can see straight through to the metal work. There may have been insulation in there, or may, there may have been something in there, but it's quite a big hole and that entire section doesn't appear to have anything in it at the moment. I don't know what was mounted there previously, some piece of equipment, but that's pretty typical what I expect to find. Um, and what is in the van, I've just had one of the access panels off the rear doors, it's rock wall, it's that horrible itchy stuff that when you put it apart, you know, it's fiberglass or whatever it is, but it's nasty stuff to breathe in, let alone interact with. Um, at least the stuff in the scene is, is, is um, expanded foam, PIR. Um, I just don't know how far it goes back now. I, I didn't expect that to be wobbling about like that. But there you go. Good example of, um, you know, it's a November day. Um, Sally was sleeping in here over the weekend. Um, she drove it here. It had been raining hard. And, you know, you're going to get condensation forming on exposed metal and that's exactly what's up there. All the warm air and heat and moisture is going straight past these lights fitting through all the gaps um, or transferring through all these um, individual... That's confused it. <laughs> there it goes. These access ports, they're brilliant little things. I like them. Is that one? No, it's that one there. They've got a ceiling grommet in them. This is an access port for the one of the three sets of aerials on the roof. But again, you can see the insulation only goes so far. Three inch void, water droplets up there. But that's only a thin piece of plastic and heat's going to go through that. Um, and any warm air that's got moisture in it is going to condense on the metalwork. This is effectively the, the plastic skin here and the... and these covers are effectively a vapour barrier so um, however the moist air is getting up there it may not actually be through this route it could be up through the sides because there's lots of holes in the sides of the vehicle and if they're not blocked off then it's getting up to the roof that way but either way it's condensing up there dripping down and that's easy enough to fix it just needs the insulation in contact with the um, van skin um, and an adequate vapour barrier all around but there you go just a quick um, bit of info about how much moisture I found already.